Who are the new rulers of the world? Their empire today is greater than the British Empire ever was. This is the center of this new empire, all within a square mile in Washington. Down the road from the White House and the US Treasury is the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. These two bodies are the agents of the richest countries on Earth, especially the United States. The World Bank and the IMF were set up near the end of World War II to rebuild the economies of Europe. Later they began offering loans to poor countries, but only if they privatized their economies and allowed Western corporations free access to their raw materials and markets. Debt has really been used as an instrument um, in order for the IMF and the World Bank to get their policies um, implemented in many developing countries. And we're into a situation now where the poorest countries are in a cycle, a vicious cycle of poverty. They can't get out. And the, the kind of, of debt cancellation that's been given still will not allow them to get out of those poverty traps. Not a question of debt forgiveness, because actually many of the debts were incurred under pressure from the international institutions or were, were given in collusion with governments which weren't acting in the, in the interests of their people. Let me ask you, do you know the difference between Tanzania and Goldman Sachs? Tanzania is a country that has a gross national product of 2.2 billion dollars and shares it between 25 million people. Goldman Sachs is an investment firm which has annual profits of 2.2 billion dollars and shares them among 161 partners. That's the world we're living in now. The World Bank says its aim is to help poor people, promoting what it calls global development. It's an ingenious system, a kind of socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. The rich get richer on running up debt, cheap labor and paying as little tax as possible, while the poor get poorer as their jobs and public services are cut back in order to pay just the interest on debt owed by their governments to the World Bank. Here in Indonesia, where most people are poor, the handouts to the rich have been extraordinary to say the least. Internal documents of the World Bank confirm that up to a third of the bank's loans to the dictatorship of General Suharto went into the pockets of his cronies and corrupt officials. That's around $8 billion.